what's up people happy wednesday good morning um okay general hospital this is not the tv version of course but picking up where i left off yesterday well close to where i left off yesterday so anyway um anna devane is sitting in her office and dante and lucky comes in about the second crime scene that they went to and they were giving her the details on that telling her that the victim was Kristen bauer they said she was 29 years old found dead in her apartment no forced entry red ribbon tied around her uh wrist and Anna said that it was the same as the first victim. Red ribbon tied around the wrist, no forced entry. She says, so maybe the killer has a thing for red ribbons. But Dante said it, it's a, clearly a pattern. And that um, they canvassed the area. They talked to friends. And she had no beef with nobody. There was no forced entry into the house. There was no broken window um so they said basically they're back to square one they said that they took the uh ribbon to forensics but it came back with nothing no prints anna said that um the mayor mayor lomax has been calling her phone off the hook all morning demanding that they do a press conference to alert the public of what they feel is a serial killer and Anna is still refusing to do the the, um, the press conference because she does not want to panic the whole damn town. But Dante said that they may have to do this because they may be dealing with a serial killer on their hands. Um, and Anna said that she still wants them to go look through all the evidence that they pieced together so far, see if they can run it again. And Lucky said that there's no way. He said they, they ran it twice. They said whoever killed these girls are very skilled. You know, the person is a very skilled killer. And clearly they don't make mistakes. Well, they haven't made a mistake yet. Um. So Anna says that she will have no choice but to do the press conference. And she will do it later today. So meanwhile, Maxie went over to her mother's and Max to drop off baby Georgie. So Felicia could babysit. And she was, you know, talking to her mother about the whole miscarriage. And Felicia said that she was OK with it. You know, she said it's sad that her baby, you know, she couldn't have it. But she said, you know, it was a blessing, too. She said, um maybe it wasn't the right time for her to have a baby she said you know being at her age and you know her and mac are basically retired and they're happy with their life and they're happy with the kids that they have um and she says that you know she's just happy to be a grandmother and a mother so she said that's good enough for her she don't need more kids and she says she's perfectly okay with it so her and Maxie hugged and Maxie and um, Felicia asked her where was Spinelli and she said Spinelli was still out of town on his little mission or whatever because he couldn't tell her what it was. I guess he's doing something for the feds or something like that, you know, computer hacking for the feds or something. So he's going to be out of town a little while longer. Um. So she says she had to head over to Maxie's. Maxie's is her boutique. If you remember in The Sims series that i did maxi borrowed fifty thousand dollars from mac to start up her own boutique so she has her own clothing boutique now because you know she's a facet a fashionista so she has to have it so um she has her own boutique and she's headed out for that um baby georgie is a little fussy today crying up a storm um but felicia says she can handle it so meanwhile, Olivia is at the uh, Metro Court having lunch with Lulu. Um, they're having lunch and Lulu said that she was going to take the baby over to Maxie's to see, you know, to buy a couple new outfits for baby Rocco. 
and Olivia said she was going to hang around the Metro Court and have a quick drink. So that's when Olivia bumped into Carly and Carly was happy to see Olivia back in Port Charles and they started talking about uh, Steve and then they started talking about Carly and Jax's separation. Carly said that the divorce, they kind of put it on hold for now, you know, with everything going on with Alexis, you know, because she's representing uh, Jax. And since Alexis is out of town, they decided to just put the divorce on hold. And Olivia said maybe her and Jax could get back together. And Carly says she don't know about that. Um, so Morgan comes into the Metro court to see his mother because he has something important to tell her. And Carly was, of course, happy to see her son. And Morgan tells Carly about his engagement to Amanda. And Carly was elated. She was very ecstatic to have yet another son getting married because Michael, of course, is married to Serena Baldwin, Corinthos. Um, and she asked him, did him and Amanda set a date yet? And he said, no, they haven't set a date yet because they just got engaged. And she said he has to, you know, she can't wait for Michael to come back home so Morgan could tell Michael. But Morgan said he already called Michael and told him. And Carly said, did Michael say when he was coming back to town? And he said that Michael said he was coming back to town tomorrow. So he's him and Serena are coming back home tomorrow from the honeymoon. They were in Jamaica. So they're coming back tomorrow. And um, Carly said that they have to have a toast. They have to have a drink. And she asked, where was Amanda? And he said Amanda um, had a shift that she had to do at the hospital because, you know, Amanda's a nurse at GH. So she had to do a shift. Um, so Olivia congratulated Morgan and Morgan said he still had to tell Sonny, but Sonny was in a meeting, so he didn't get a chance to run it by him. And Carly says she knows Sonny's going to be happy and Jax is going to be happy. Um, so meanwhile, back at the hospital, Amanda runs into Britt and Robin while they were talking and they noticed that Amanda was positively glowing. So they asked what was going on and Amanda told them that her and Morgan were engaged and Robin and uh, Britt congratulated her and Britt said she can't wait to throw the bachelorette party um, because the bachelorette party that she threw for Serena was insane. And she said she definitely don't know if she could top that one, but she's going to try. So they were laughing and happy. Um, so meanwhile, back at um, ELQ, Tracy went inside Alan's office and for a little quick meeting with Jason, Alan, and um, AJ to discuss ELQ Cosmetics, the new cosmetics company that Jason wanted to start. And all Tracy was throwing a hissy fit because of all the money he was throwing behind the cosmetics company. And AJ was upset because Jason wanted to take money from ELQ Entertainment budget. ELQ Entertainment is an entertainment company that ELQ started. And AJ is the president of ELQ Entertainment. He runs that division. ELQ Entertainment is um tv network is they run they own a couple of tv networks they own some radio stations and aj's in charge of it um and aj is pissed that jason wants to take you know some money out of the budget for elq entertainment to fund elq cosmetics and he told Alan that he can't let that happen. And Alan said that he trusts Jason and he, you know, he trusts his decision. And he knows that once the cosmetics company takes off and they make a lot of money, it's going to be more money to throw at ELQ Entertainment. And AJ stormed off because he was pissed. Tracy laughed at AJ and called him a loser. And AJ called Tracy a mob of something a mob um, marrying witch or something like that because she marries into the mob so much. So Tracy told Alan that um, she wanted to talk to him alone. So Jason left and Tracy said that she knows that Alan went behind her back and tried to sell Lois Cerullo 
LMB Records. Because remember, LMB was Lois and Brenda's record company that Edward took over. And ELQ has owned it for years. And Alan wants to sell it back to Lois. And Tracy said, hell no. He's not selling it back to Lois. ELQ is keeping it. And Alan said that he's going to do whatever he wants. And Tracy said that need that she remind Alan that she owns 50% of that company just as much as he does. So she says, hell no. Alan said that we'll see about that. So it's time back at the PCPD. It's press conference time. So there's a press conference. Um, Anna started and she said that they have a serial killer out there named the Red Ribbon Killer. He ties red ribbons around his victim's wrists. And so far they have two victims and they have no suspects at this moment. But she said that she advises the public to lock their doors if they have security systems to put on their security alarms. If they don't have a security system, she advised them to invest in one. And she said that they should not go anywhere alone. They should be in public places surrounded by people. If anything should happen, they are. Um, she prefers that they dial 911 immediately. And um, she said, just, you know, keep a lookout and keep their doors and windows locked and secure. And she said that they will catch whoever's doing this. And she turned the press conference back over to Mayor Lomax. So um, she went into her office with Lucky and Dante and told them to beef up the police patrols on the streets. She said she wants more officers on the streets, even if that means they have to work overtime. She wants them doing it ASAP. So Maxie is at Maxie's boutique, her boutique, when Lulu and Rocco come in and they hug and she says that, you know, she wants to get some baby clothes. She says she loves what Maxie's done with the store. It looks beautiful. And Maxie says that, you know, it took a lot to get it done, but it's done. And she said that um they should definitely get together for drinks. And they laughed. And um Maxie's store is actually good. I actually, does, you know, is a high-end boutique nothing but the best from the fashionista so anyway um olivia got a text from steve telling her that they need to talk but olivia didn't want to talk she ignored the text and she told carly that she was just going to go back to uh dante and lulu's and that she'll see her later so olivia went down to the parking garage and she heard a noise she looked behind her but she didn't see anyone then she kept walking when someone tried to grab her from behind, she stomped on the person's foot and ran, but her heel broke off and she tripped and she got back up and tried to run. But whoever someone grabbed her, they turned her around and she saw that the person was wearing a ski mask. They took out a knife and stabbed her in the stomach and Olivia fell to the ground and they took a red ribbon and wrapped it around her um, wrist and Olivia was losing consciousness. So that's the end of this part. Um, and I will see you all later for the General Hospital TV review. Or I might just give you a second part later. Let me know how you felt about this part. And I might just drop a second one later. Because I don't want to make you wait till tomorrow. So I might just drop a second one later on. But I'll see all of you later. Let me know how you felt about this part. I'll see you all later. Have a great day.